Fisher's annual letter, Melinda and I take the toughest questions we get asked and give our answers. One that's come up for a long time is, as we make the world healthier, is the population going to get so big that feeding everybody and maintaining the environment is going to be impossible. Here we can see a chart that looks at the total world population over the last several hundred years. And at first glance, this is a bit scary. We go from less than a billion in 1800, and then three, four, five, six, and 7.4 billion where we are today is happening even faster. So Melinda and I wondered whether providing new medicines and keeping children alive, would that create more of a population problem? What we found out is that as health improves, families choose to have less children. And this effect is very, very dramatic. We find that in every country of the world, this is repeated. The population growth goes down as we improve health. So we've taken that chart that shows the global population growth, and we've actually extended it out all the way to 2100. And we can see that instead of continuing, it actually flattens out. Another way to see that is through this rate of population growth. And you can see that in the 60s, that reached a pretty high number, over 2% per year. And it's now come way, way down. Now, 11 billion people is still a lot, but the good news is that the faster we improve health, the faster family size goes down. And so we can feel great about saving those lives Now, this is Black Light. We're going to be talking about some deep, deep subjects. We're going to get to the root of the problem that we have today. He talks like he's the almighty creator of the universe. I find that problematic. Joining us right now, King Randall One, founder of the X for Boys, uh, organization based out of Georgia. Uh, so, King, explain why in the world uh, you're conservative, correct? Yes, sir. So, please explain to me why this bill, why Republicans are pushing for a voter suppression bill when last year we saw record turnout in Georgia, record turnout. So why would they want to restrict voting when you just had record turnout in Georgia? Well, let me start off by saying uh, you had me uh, mistaken. I'm not a Republican. I, I do consider myself conservative. No, no, no. no. Actually, um, I didn't say Republican. I said you're conservative. Okay. I said you're conservative. Right, absolutely. That's what I said. Right. Yeah, I was saying that because you called me a Republican on Twitter. Um, however, uh, with this particular bill, I don't consider uh, voting my particular fight. Um, I do consider uh, voting an asset to us and maybe something we can use as a tactic to help. But as far as us pushing voting uh, all the way out, like voting is going to be some systemic change uh, for the black community, uh, to me, is, is not w the way to go. Um, if you look at the human anatomy of the body, uh, the body has as many different parts. And I do respect uh, you guys' fight, you know, in regards to voting, but I don't consider myself uh, fighting uh, for the right to vote that much. Because do you not vote? We hadn't got anything do you from not the vote? government. Uh, yes, sir, I vote, absolutely. Okay, so when you say you guys just fight, first of all, there are multiple fights, there are multiple issues we could be concerned about. Voting is absolutely. one of those issues. Are you not concerned that Republicans in your state are trying to restrict access to the ballot for no reason other than they are uh, pushing the lie that Donald Trump also pushed? Right, absolutely. I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, however, again, that's not my fight. I believe... No, 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 I, no, I asked you a question. <laughs> ask you a question. The question is this here. Do you believe Republicans in your state are wrong mm -hmm. to be pushing this voter suppression bill? Can you give me a, a, the list of things that's all on the bill? Because I know you said uh, the, vo the voter ID. Well, no, here's a perfect, here's a perfect example. Uh, this particular bill right here gets rid of no excuse absentee balloting. Republicans in Georgia passed mm -hmm. no excuse absentee balloting 15 years ago thinking it was going to help them. They're angry because you had 
people who voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and also John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock won. So they're changing the law because they're angry they lost at the ballot box. But for, le- for 14 years, it was fine until last year. Is that, again, do you consider that to be uh, egregious on the part of Georgia Republicans? Why would they change the law? Because they lost. How about making a better argument for the voters? I agree with you. Uh, I do. I agree with you. I'm not against you there. Um, I definitely think uh, that is an issue that uh, I believe you guys could fight. Um, But that, again, uh, voting is not my issue to fight. I believe. So uh, so, so what's your issue to fight? Uh, My issue, I fight for young black men before they die. Um, and that's what I do in my organization. Um, I do teach them to vote, but I don't tell them that voting is going to be the in, be all end all. No one like says the be all the end promote. all, but it's a part of it. But you guys, but you guys promote voting like it's just going to change like the systemic outlook of the black community. That's not where it's at. We have to get out and go do for self in our own communities. So and okay, so, so define do for self. Yeah. When I say do for self, you shared one of my tweets, uh, my videos, and I was actually a big fan of yours. But you shared one of my tweets. Uh, when I said black people need to stop begging the government and go and do for self out in our communities, you shared the video and called me an idiot. I didn't see anything idiotic about that statement no, 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 at no. all. So when you say do for self, like what? Mm-hmm. Explain that. Okay. Okay, for example, uh, here in Albany, Georgia, we complain about our school systems a lot. Many of our young men can't read. Uh, they have v- very ho- horrible literacy rates. We don't have any rehab programs here uh, for juvenile uh, offenders. What I decided to do, I started a program two years ago, decided to do for self, um, and I started taking children into my home. Uh, I started taking custody of kids from juvenile court, and I started molding them and training them and teaching them skill trades, etc. Now I'm 21 years old. I just purchased a school here in Albany, Georgia, to come back us being in the government-funded schools that are not teaching our children children what they need to learn. Um, so that's what I mean by do for self, simply getting up and going out and do it. So I think the stereotype that I'm young black in America and I can't do anything because somebody's holding me down. So, Absolutely not. So a question. Me, you, me and you, some you, teenagers went and, go ahead, me and some teenagers went and bought a school, and we just bought a school bus simply from going out and doing work. We decided to go fix our own communities. I'm not expecting anything from no politician. I'm not expecting nothing from Donald Trump. Joe Biden and nobody. We're going to go do it for ourselves, and that's what I believe we need to be doing. I can vote, sure, but nothing's going to change in our community. So you, went to, so you went to the juvenile court system. Mm-hmm. Is that not government? Absolutely. Unclip the leg bar, hold it about 20 centimeters in front of the puppet's control. Put your thumb in the middle of the leg bar at right angles to the bar. And then use the leg bar in a seesaw method, lifting one knee, moving the puppet forward and down. Then raise the puppet up, lift the other knee, slide. Roland Martin is a boule puppet. You to the final 2020 presidential debate between President Donald J. Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. Tonight's debate is sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates. It is conducted under health and safety protocols designed by the Commission's health security advisor. We welcome to the stage former Vice President Joe Biden and President Donald J. Trump. want to say a very good evening to both of you. This debate will cover six major topics. At the beginning of each section, each candidate will have two minutes uninterrupted to answer my first question. The debate commission will then turn on their microphone. If you're ready, let's start. And we will begin with the fight against the coronavirus. President Trump, the first question is for you. The country is heading into a dangerous new phase. More than 40,000 Americans are in the hospital tonight with COVID, including record numbers here in Tennessee. And since the two of you last shared a stage, 16,000 Americans have died from COVID. So please be specific. How would you lead the country during this next stage of the coronavirus crisis? Two minutes uninterrupted. So, as you know, 2.2 million people modeled out were expected to die. We closed up the greatest economy in the world in order to fight this horrible disease that came from China. It's a worldwide pandemic. It's all over the world. You see the spikes in Europe and many other places right now. Uh, If you notice, the mortality rate is down 85 percent. The excess mortality rate is way down and much lower than almost any other country. 
and we're fighting it and we're fighting it hard. There is a spike. There was a spike in Florida and it's now gone. There was a very big spike in Texas. It's now gone. There was a very big spike in Arizona. It's now gone. And there are some spikes and surges in other places. They will soon be gone. We have a vaccine that's coming. It's ready. It's going to be announced within weeks and it's going to be delivered. We have uh, Operation Warp Speed, which is the military is going to distribute the vaccine. I can tell you from personal experience that uh, I was in the hospital, I had it, and I got better. And I will tell you that uh, I had something that they gave me, a therapeutic, I guess they would call it. Some people could say it was a cure. But uh, I was in for a short period of time and I got better very fast or I wouldn't be here tonight. And now they say I'm immune. Whether it's four months or a lifetime, nobody's been able to say. You have two minutes uninterrupted. 220,000 Americans dead. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this. Anyone who's responsible for not taking control, in fact, not saying I'm, I take no responsibility initially, anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. We're in a situation... This is Black Light. This is To Be Continued. Stay tuned for the next one.